Welcome to Cabral House Call. I'm Stephen Cabral, board certified naturopathic doctor, and today we're back to answer your questions. So let's get right into it. The first question today is, all right, so the first question today from Walter is, does Tai Chi lower blood pressure? So there's actually a lot of great research behind not only Tai Chi, but also meditation, Qigong, and yoga, that all of those do help to lower blood pressure. So you can look at specific things called the relaxation response. You can look at, um, there's all different actually kind of meters that you can actually test your blood pressure. You can test your heart rate variability. All you know, fun scientific things to look at that. But let's talk just about why, you know, why this would make sense in the first place. The bottom line is even if you were just to slow life down, to take a deep breath in through your nose and a longer breath out through your mouth, I usually say about five seconds in and about seven seconds out, just relaxing the body. All of these things are doing this one thing, they're calming the central nervous system. When you calm your central nervous system, all this excitation which constricts the arteries and blood vessels that gets you amped up and gets you in that fight or flight based response that can cause high blood pressure, all of a sudden they start to dilate, that means open up the blood vessels, you start to relax, your body starts to calm down, and guess what? Your blood pressure goes down. These are the same things that we see every day in exercise. You do a really heavy set of squats or an exercise and your blood pressure goes up. Well, guess what? You drop those weights, you breathe again, and then your body relaxes. And that's why those exercises are obviously great for blood pressure as well. But here's the thing. What we're really talking about is not the exercise per se, but the act of that specific movement or exercise, meaning this. It's the, it's the relaxation response. It's the act of relaxation that lowers blood pressure. So for, if you could lie down on your back, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and just relax, well then guess what? You're in a sense meditating. You are in a sense doing Tai Chi without the actual movement. You're calming your body down. High blood pressure has so much to do with lowering stress levels that if you do that, you're going to be just so much better off. So much better off than eating specific foods that help lower um, high blood pressure, all of those things. Now, keep in mind that high blood pressure is not just about the relaxation response. Um, it is also about imbalances in your body. It's imbalances between certain um, minerals, such as sodium and potassium, such as calcium and magnesium. And so you do, you should look at those, of course. But at the same time, if you can't calm yourself down, I really believe that even using supplementation to lower blood pressure, which we can do, you know, rebalance the body. We're not technically, I guess, lowering blood pressure per se because blood pressure is strictly a symptom. What we're doing is we're actually looking at the underlying root causes of why blood blood pressure is even allowed to be there in the first place. But if we're using supplements in that case and you're not allowing your body to relax, we're using nutritional supplements almost like a um, allopathic based treatment, which is not something that I like to do. I'll use it in the beginning, but at the same time, I'm helping people learn to calm their bodies down, learn to relax. Now, keep in mind, it's a two way street. You can't relax sometimes because you don't actually have the chemistry to be able to calm your body down. Meaning, like, you're anxious, you're overwhelmed, you're feeling uh, panicked, all of those things. And that's because you may be lacking in things like magnesium or your cortisol levels are too high because of a um, adrenal based or hormone based stimulant based issue, which phosphatidylserine or other things could help with. So in the beginning, the, the supplements are there because they need to provide your body with the deficiencies that you may have. And then after that, you use the lifestyle to blend that in and be able to take care of it and set it in at a deeper level. So uh, I kind of went on and on, but the bottom line is this. All of those slower modalities do work. They're scientifically validated, and they work very, very simply, simply by dilating the blood vessels, calming your body down, and that lowers your blood pressure. Next question. Beverly asks, what day is my favorite day to start a new plan? So for me personally, every time I do an intermittent fast, every time I do um, my detox, the Dr. Paul detox or a detox in general is always on a Monday. It's just that's how I always start it. And there's two reasons behind that. Monday to me, not a Sunday, Sunday is still kind of like a relaxation day um, with my family over the weekend. So it's just kind of like my day off. It's my day and I'm not starting a new plan on that day. So on a Monday though, it's a fresh start to a work week for me and a fresh start to a week. So I look at it as, um, yeah, this is a fresh start. I'm going to get started today. I'm going to get started on a Monday. And I also think of it this way. Mondays just so happen to be one of my busiest days of the week. So a lot of times I'm not thinking about when my next meal is or whatever it might be. So if I have a program to follow, like my um, shake, 
vegetarian based meal or some type of uh, nice whole food meal for lunch, shake and then dinner, that's easy. I can just implement that. Or my shake fast day, I'm just doing my shakes for that day, or I'm doing intermittent fast. But it's easy because I have so much work to do. I'm just kind of blowing and blasting through the day um, that for me it's not as big of a deal and I can handle that best on a Monday. But to be honest, uh, for me, it's that fresh start on that Monday and that's why I like to do it. My whole mindset, everything is wiped clean Sunday night and when I get started, uh, when I wake up on Monday, it's just like, oh, this is a new week. This is new, new stuff to, um, to tackle. Uh, for other people, sometimes I like to start on a Saturday and the reason is because they don't have as much control over their life Monday through Friday with work, with you know family obligations and all those things. So they like to have Saturday and Sunday to do their shake fast day or to do their intermittent fast or whatever it might be and, and that's perfectly acceptable as well. What I would say is look at what motivates you and obviously take advantage of that. It's all about that motivation. You know, It's all about how can you tap into that willpower and for me that does not exist as much on the weekend uh, but it certainly does more so on a Monday. Hopefully that answers that question for you. All right, so our last question is, um, we work with a lot of families here in Boston, the Cabral Wellness Institute um, and online of course as well. And so one of them, a parent asks and Missy asks, do you recommend chewable children's vitamins? Okay, so I grew up chewing on Flintstone vitamins and I know a lot of other people do chewable vitamins as well. The issue for me is this, when you're looking at children's vitamins, you have to be a little bit more careful than adults. You should be careful for both of course, but children's bodies do not have the same ability, they're just not as strong yet, to detoxify, flush out, and deal with all these harmful chemicals in the environment and when you're looking at a lot of children's vitamins, they're, they're used from some of the cheapest vitamin materials, like vitamin D2, and they're made from, um, you know, what's another poor example, maybe folic acid and not like a methylfolate. And they contain dyes like red 40, and they contain yellow, you know, dyes and blues. And keep in mind, dyes are literally paint. Like it's paint that you put into a product, not food, safe coloring and like that. These are actual paint colors and they're put into your kids' foods and our foods as well. To children, that's extremely harmful. They're called neurotoxins, which means when you take them in, they actually affect your nervous system. They affect the brain, they affect the psychology, and, and they're gonna affect your child's immune system as well. Your body has to detoxify paint that obviously should not be in your environment, in your body. You have to be really careful of that. So I do not recommend a lot of children's um, chewable vitamins. There's some great liquid vitamins. Um, there's a, one called, I believe, Liquid Nutrients. I'll link that up in the show notes. Um, there are also some, so the liquid one you can just put in a kid's smoothie, which we love to do at breakfast for kids. I think it's a great thing. Um, you could put them into like um, a homemade sorbet if you make that. I mean, all sorts of things you can do. Um, what's another one? You can do chewable vitamins. So we have a few. One's by Nordic Naturals. There's a few different companies that we do like that don't contain any of the artificial sweeteners and they don't contain any of the artificial dyes. Instead of me, you know, just thinking of them off the top of my head, why don't I link up the products that we're currently recommending and if that ever changes, uh, meaning like we, we find additional good ones because the ones that we're recommending right now are great, but if we find more, then of course we want to give you more options as well. So we'll link those up. Um, here's the thing, just make sure you're looking for no um, big synthetic chemicals, that you're looking for third party testing, that you are looking for no dyes, um, and that you're looking for no artificial sweeteners. So if you do that, you're certainly on the right um, course, the right pace. And you know what? In general, don't buy your vitamins at a you know a, a store where you're buying paper towels and you know toilet paper. I think that's just probably a good overall theme. Buy your vitamins in a place that specializes in health foods and vitamins, um, or a company online that specializes in just that. Don't buy it in an all for one place. An all for one place is going to be what's the cheapest vitamin that I can sell for the largest markup and so they make the most amount of money. Now, of course, that's just me speaking generally. There's obviously some places that do sell good ones, but I'm trying to look out for you and your family the same way I would look out for my own children, and that's what I would do specifically as well. Hopefully those answered your questions today. Um, feel free to submit your own. Just go to stephencabral.com forward slash askcabral. I'll talk with you soon.